The space race is going faster than ever, and this week's space news won't stop. Today, we will see an update on NASA's DART mission results, the successful stacking of SpaceX's orbiting Starship, and new James Webb Space Telescope images. SpaceX's chopsticks have been on fire, and by chopsticks, we mean the arms of SpaceX's Mechazilla launch tower found at Starbase in South Texas. Mechazilla uses these gigantic arms to raise the Super Heavy rockets and the Starship spacecraft itself onto Starbase's orbital launch pad. SpaceX published a video on October 21st depicting the stacking of Ship 24 on Booster 7 on October 20th. Assuming testing goes well, this dynamic combination will launch SpaceX's Starship into orbit for the first time in the coming months. According to a SpaceX tweet from last Friday, the Starbase may be used to launch and catch this massive tower-stacking spacecraft. Mechazilla is a perfect landing and takeoff place for Starship. Elon Musk, the founder and CEO of SpaceX, has suggested that the tower's chopsticks be used to hold the boosters below the grid fins of returning Super Heavy spacecraft. This would make catching the ships easier as they return to Earth. According to Musk, the Super Heavy can be slotted into position on a Mechazilla and launched from an orbital launch pad. SpaceX has received international and scientific praise for its many successful launches using Falcon 9 rockets. These rockets, however, must be towed back to the launch point after they crash in landing zones or on ships at sea. The reassembly on Thursday was technically a restack since Ship 24 and Booster 7 had previously been placed together on October 11th. Mechazilla retrieved them on the 16th of October, so there is too much work. It deserves a rest so that it continues to be a massive part of space history. The journey to orbit for Booster 7 and Ship 24 is not yet complete. Only seven of the Booster 7 rocket's 33 Raptor engines have been fired at once during static fire tests undertaken by SpaceX. It's also important to remember that Ship 24 was absent during the Booster 7 engine testing. SpaceX isn't stopping with just these two starships. The company is actively working on many other ideas. According to Jack Bayer of NASA Spaceflight, the Ship 25 spacecraft was delivered to Starbase's suborbital launch pad on October 19th. The James Webb Space Telescope has consistently delivered stunning new images and insights into the universe. This mirror is six times bigger than the one on the Hubble Space Telescope, which has been taking pictures of the stars since 1990. The scale, however, is just one consideration. The new telescope can see farther and more clearly by capturing infrared wavelengths rather than visible light. But as our visual field expands to include infinity, each image becomes even more ethereal. The pillars. The pillars of creation image captured by the Hubble Space Telescope in 1995 is well known to the public. And now, 27 years later, we will be able to reveal even more of the marvels hidden in the cornerstones of creation with the help of the James Webb Space Telescope. The near-infrared provides a sharper image of this distant cosmic nursery, which is 6,500 light years away. There are young stars, just a few hundred thousand years old, seen on the outside edges of the top pillar. Hydrogen molecule outbursts cause the red lava-like areas in the other pillars to form stars. The image covers eight light years, although it only shows a small fraction of the Eagle Nebula. Radial dust rings around binary stars. The James Webb Space Telescope photographed two massive stars, each 25 to 30 times as massive as our Sun. Their orbit brings wolf raynet 140 close together about every eight years. When that happens, gravitational forces launch a huge cloud of dust into space. At least 17 dust rings are visible in the JWST image, or as ground-based telescopes saw only two. A magnified view of Neptune's rings. The James Webb Space Telescope took this new picture of Neptune's rings, and it's the first one in almost 30 years. There are dust bands around the planet, and we can also see its rings. Heidi Webb, a Webb transdisciplinary scientist and Neptune system expert, commented, 
It has been three decades since we last detected these faint, dusty rings. We have never seen them in infrared before, but now we can. The Tarantula The Tarantula Nebula, which spans a width of 340 light years, it clears the way for discovering hundreds of stars hidden by dust in Hubble's initial image. This blue region is where brand new stars are formed. Even if you know the nebula's namesake eight-legged monster is out there, you may not be able to tell it apart from the tunnel of a tarantula. Gas and particles in space emit brilliant turquoise and purple light. While the rest of us may find it aesthetically pleasing, professional astronomers will appreciate the data it gives. And talking about data, after a whole month, what do researchers know about NASA's asteroid collision? A month ago, NASA's DART spacecraft was involved in a historic asteroid impact. What new findings have scientists made throughout this extended span of time? Important steps were taken on September 26th by NASA. It's the first time in human history that we can move a celestial body physically. Dimorphos was the target of NASA's double asteroid redirection test, in which a spacecraft was intentionally slammed into an asteroid. The research was conducted to find a viable solution to the problem of asteroid danger to Earth. Another objective was to investigate the smallest asteroid ever visited by a spacecraft. Seeing the results roll in has been exciting. Everyone has been busy studying and implementing them with great interest. Many thoughtful pieces must be assembled before venturing too far down any path. Even though it would be easy to jump to conclusions based on the information we have right now, researchers are now looking for the strongest evidence to back up their current ideas about the asteroid and the spacecraft crash. A considerable quantity of information was previously known to scientists before the trip began. Dimorphos is the smallest member of the family of double asteroid systems. That's why it orbits the larger Didymus in the same general pattern. Dimorphos is much narrower at just 160 meters than Didymus at 780 meters. NASA gathered information on the asteroid throughout the spacecraft's trip. In the last 10 minutes before impact, the spaceship's cameras caught the genuine look of Dimorphos. It was rocky and uneven there, with pebbles and dust covering everything. Furthermore, the rocky mass clearly included debris in addition to being solid. Many concluded that asteroids are kind of a trash pile or kind of a loosely held together collection of stones based on their appearance and knowledge of past asteroids. Since scientists could only study the asteroid's exterior, they have no idea what its interior structure looks like. Secondly, and crucially, is the light Italian CubeSat for imaging of asteroids. This cube accompanied the DART impactor and was built to take photographs of the impact site. The LICIA cube has recently shown that Dimorphos resembles a comet because of streams of debris moving away from the planet. New information will be available as the LICIA cube continues to collect data. The collision also allowed scientists to learn more about Didymus and its aftermath. The European Space Agency plans to send a mission called Hera to the asteroid in 2024 to find out what happened after the collision. What is the most exciting news in this never-ending space race that you have heard of? Tell us in the comments and leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this.